All right. So uh, it's probably not a whole lot of people watching right now. It's probably just maybe one person, but oh well. <laughs> um, so the reason for this uh, live stream is that uh, I have a tool that can possibly help you out, um, help maximize your time on the water. Um, you can scout different uh, locations ahead of time before you go to the water. You can create custom maps. Um, this can possibly help out those of you that don't have a fish finder, to be quite honest. Sorry, <laughs> had an interruption there. Um, so, um, as I was saying, this tool um, can help anybody out. You can pick different spots on the water before you head out, and uh, it'll help you when you're scouting. So, um, in order to take advantage of this, the first thing you would need is Google Earth on a computer. And that's how you're going to create your maps. Um, then you're going to need a, an application or an app on your smartphone called Google My Maps. You can find that in the Android store. And you need a Google account, obviously, to use any of the Google apps. Um, so let's go ahead and get into it here. All right, so right here we have Google uh, Google Earth. Pretty sure a lot of you guys can, uh, or a lot of you guys have used this app before, a time or two. But you can really use this uh, when you're heading out to the water. And I'm just going to show you guys how you can go ahead and do that. Let me just blow it up here so you guys can see it a little better. And I'm going to click on uh, my pre-made map. I'm just going to show you my map real quick. I don't care if you guys, I mean, these spots aren't really secret. They're not like a honey hole, obviously, because as you all know, uh, all I catch is dinks. So you might not want to, you might not want to follow my, my waypoints. Anyways, so... These are different locations on the water that I found according to historic photos of when the water was at a like a low pool. So once you get the Google once you get Google Earth installed on your computer, um, you can just come in here, open it up. You can browse where whatever lake you want to create the map on. So, like, uh, for instance, um, let's just let's just start on a new one here. I'm not going to use mine. So, once you open up Google Earth, you'll click, you'll right click on My Places here on the left hand side, and you're going to click on Folder. So, let's just call this New Eastman Waypoints. Just a generic name, obviously. And you can put a description, doesn't matter, whatever. It, it's your map. You can put whatever you want in there. So now we're going to click OK. So that creates us a new little folder right here. And I'm going to put it up at the top. It creates this folder where you can place different uh, markers, different uh, waypoints. So obviously we have Eastman Lake here. This picture is when it was pretty much a full pool so we don't want that we want to draw the water down to where we can actually see what's under the water and to do that you'll go up to the top of your screen here and hold on one second just blow it up for you guys here all right 
bear with me. This uh Anyway, um, I don't want to waste too much of your time, so um, I'll probably do this with another lake um, at, in a few, at a future date. But if you guys can see that, on the top of your screen in Google Earth, you'll have these little icons here. You're going to be looking for the little, it's like a clock icon. If you mouse over it, it says show historic imagery. If you click on that, it'll bring up this slider right here. We can take a look at different photos of the lake at different points in time. So if you press back, this uh, photo right here, it's full pull, full pull, full pull, keep going back. Eh, this is an okay one. But I don't think this is uh, when it was down at its lowest. I just keep going through the. See, it's, uh, these ones are not that great. Um, no, that's not it. All right, so I think that's going to be the best one there. Maybe 2014. Um, maybe 2015. Let's see. Let's find a good one here. Let's just use this one. Um, so we got October 11th, 2016. Try to maximize the screen here. And I need to change the setting to the live stream. But anyway, so once you're in the right photo you're looking for, you can see when the water is at low pool, there you can you can see all the stuff that's underwater. It's pretty neat. So let's say for some reason I wanted to rock, mark this rock pile here. You would simply, on the top here, it's the second button. If you mouse over the little pin icon, it says add place mark. So if you add the place mark, it's going to put it right over that rock pile. And you can just title it whatever you want, rock pile. And it has the coordinates here, the GPS coordinates. Give it a description if you want. I don't put a description. Um, style and color. You can put the. You can you can change the color of the pin. Obviously, you got the time and date of the photo and all this good stuff in here. But the cool thing is next to the name, you have this little icon here. If you click the little pin, you can select different icons here. So let's say I wanted to mark this as a rock pile. I don't think there's a icon for a rock, but what I do is I use this little falling rocks icon as my rock pile icon. And then you select OK. And like I said before, you can change the color of the icons. If you click this little color palette, you could change the color of the rock pile, play around with that a little. I just like to leave them as uh, stock. It's okay, we got the rock pile there. Now, you can just basically go around picking up rock piles and add them. Whoops, so if you place it down there, you can move it. Let's say, I don't know, let's call it rock pile two. So yeah, you can go around putting different markers on different underwater structure. It's above water in this picture, but um, it's underwater as of right now. Like for instance, right now, 
I've been doing good on this parking lot here. I'm just going to tell you guys that. Um, I, when I say good, I'm not talking about giants, but cons consistent action. They're dinks. Some are, eh, I'd say they're, some of them are a kayak tournament, you know, keepers, 12 inches or above. But what I was doing is I created a map of this area here. You can actually, I'll just show you right now. Um, so if you click on your little new waypoints folder and on the top, you'll see, where is it at here? Add polygon. It's right next to the pin icon. If you click add polygon, you can click here, click down, basically follow this path here of, you know, this, this riprap and the parking lot. That looks funny. It's like a, I don't know, like a boot or something. Anyway, so as you can see, I marked this parking lot with the riprap around the edge. And if you come in here to color and style, make it opaque. So that way you can see what's underneath it. Um, I'm going to change the color. Uh, I think I put mine as like a purple color or something. You can put whatever color you want. Um, Oh, that's for lines. Never mind. Sorry about that. We'll go to area. Color. Let's just make it. Ah, let's make it this weird, funky color. I think that's the color I put for my parking lots and stuff, like my flat areas. And you can leave it as 100% opacity, or you can bring it down some. I like to bring it down some so you can see what's under there. And then you click OK. And as you can see here, we got a nice little marker. That way, um, when you look at it in Google Maps on your phone, that's what it looks like there. It's underwater right now. This is pretty much like, a, I think the water's pretty much like this right now. Everything's underwater. And this parking lot is actually barely, it's about 10 feet underwater, maybe 15 feet. But as you can see, you have this little indicator that shows you where that parking lot is. And if you don't have a fish finder, hey, this will help you out here. And you don't have to pay for anything. All you got to do is just, and this, is, this, this map is pretty accurate. I took it out this morning. Actually, I've been taking it out for a couple weeks already. But especially today on this parking lot, I was kind of fine-tuning the spot I figured in this corner right here is the best action and then along this edge here because in this parking lot it's about 10 feet and then right where this riprap edge is it drops to around I think 30 30 feet so it's a big drop the tip of this is the best action right now because it's a quick change the fish can come up here in the shallows and and feed on, on bluegills because I've seen some bluegill in this area and then they can go back down to the deeper water where it's cooler that's what I was seeing anyways so let's go back to our previous here so you can you can pretty much start making you can start outlining all this stuff here right here this rip wrap right here along the edge is probably good because this is a flat area and it drops down right here. If you park your kayak, maybe I'd say right here, and you tossed up on the flats and brought it down over the side, you might get bit right there. And obviously, you know, there's different rock piles here. You can you can mark off. Just call rock pile three. Oops. Let's see. How do I move it? I don't know if I can move it. Let's just delete it. 
delete the rock pile. Let's go add. So the only time you can move it that I know of is when it's got a yellow blinking cursor around it. Let's just I'll just lay it right here. Rock pile. Click OK. You can probably even mark this little ditch here. Maybe fish are using this ditch as a kind of like a highway to come out to the deep water and then come up to the shallows. You know, I, I don't know. Um, you can get pretty pretty crazy with these maps. So I showed you guys how to outline areas here. Showed you guys how to mark different locations like rock piles and stuff. And it's fairly simple and uh, I'm just gonna go into my map now just to show you guys the different things that I did with my map. Oops. So see, I marked my, this is like an island out in the middle. I marked it with a flag, kind of like uh, Mount Suribachi. It was like a Mount Suribachi reference, you know, the the Marines when they planted the flag on Mount Suribachi. Um, and then, you know, I marked, I marked some of these rock piles over here. Haven't tried them yet, but, you know, you can, those of you that are, you know, pro staff out there, <laughs> pro staff fishermen, you might make better maps than I do. You might say, oh, well, the fish are on the end of this point and blah, 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 so on and so forth. Um, you can you can always make your own maps, you know. Um, there's a ton of rock right here on this point, and everybody knows this main point right here is good. A um, bunch of rock piles out here. So, like I was telling you guys, you can you can outline all these parking lots, these flat areas and road beds, and it'll help you when you're on the water. As you can see here, I'm gonna fast forward it. All this stuff right now is underwater. All of this this comes out way out here. Yeah, I think this flat area is like I think maybe 30 feet of water can't remember I was there today but um, and I I actually fished different spots and then when I came back I just started zigzagging across this area and you know this roadbed that connects to the second launch ramp I was zigzagging across it there's fish there uh, here and there but this riprap on the end of this parking lot right here was was on fire for me um, So, you know, that's that's pretty much how you make these maps. But let me go ahead and show you how you can bring it into your phone. Um, so let's turn this one off. I'm going to go and mark a couple more spots and then I'll show you guys how to how to uh, put this on your phone. Um, just bear with me here let's just mark uh, for shits and giggles we're gonna mark let's see we'll mark this one here rock pile whatever I didn't spell it right as uppercase whatever but Let's go mark some more spots here. Um, so obviously on my map I have this one outlined, but I'm just gonna go ahead and outline it. And I don't think there's like a dr big drop right here, so it might not make a difference. But just for for instructional sakes, we're gonna outline this guy here just like this I'm not gonna outline the whole thing and we'll call it flat area
So um, I'm not sure who's why. I know I have one viewer on, which is my account on my phone, but there's two more people watching. And, you know, it's the first time I'm doing this live stream. So uh, thanks, guys, for, for watching and following along. Um, I know it's kind of kind of sketchy. My first time doing this. The next time I do one, I'll iron out the bugs and just appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully you guys get something out of this. All right. So we've marked this parking lot. Let's go and let's find a, maybe find one more area. I'm not going to put too many of these uh, different landmarkers, but, you know, we're just going to find maybe one more spot. Mm, it's just, let's, mm, uh, let's see here. We'll just pick this rock pile right here at the end of this little island. No, this is not the honey hole. Rock pile. Okay, so. So we've got a couple landmarks right here. Rock pile, rock pile, rock pile. We've, uh, outlined a couple parking lots so that's as basic as we're gonna keep it for right now and now I'm gonna show you guys how to how to export this from Google Earth and then import it into Google my maps Google my maps is the application that you're gonna use on your phone to access this on the lake so once you create a folder here with waypoints you're gonna right click on the folder and you're going to say save place as and just find a location it doesn't matter where on your computer it can be it can be a, a cloud storage it doesn't matter because you're going to be uploading this into google my maps so we'll just leave it as new eastman waypoints i'm going to put it on my desktop it's a kmz file i'm going to click save and if you look down here, uh, oh, actually, no, it doesn't put it in there. It saved it on the desktop. So let's look on the desktop. And as you can see right here, um, we've got the new Eastman waypoints.kmz file. That's the file we're going to be importing. So now I'm going to go ahead and go into Google My Maps. And to get to Google My Maps, you're just going to, you can Google search it, Google My Maps. And if you click on this link here, My Maps, click on it, it'll take you to the Google My Maps page, and then you just click Get Started. As you can see, I have a couple of locations here, Mendota Slough, Hensley, and Eastman. So inside here, you're going to click Create New Map, and then Click on the, the three little dot icon next to where it says Untitled Map. Now bear with me. I should have practiced this before I uh, tried to share it with you guys. Um, recent starred. I think it's Add Layer. Yeah, Add Layer import and then you click select a file from your device desktop and then we just let's find that new eastman waypoints.kmz double click that sucker and it's going to import all those 
waypoints that we added to that map. As you can see, we created these not too long ago. We got our parking lot here, our other flat area, the different rock piles we marked, and as you can see on the left hand side here, all the names that we named them, New Eastman Waypoint. You can go ahead and delete this one, the untitled layer, because we're not using that. So here we go, New Eastman Waypoints. Click on Base Map, and let's select Satellite. As you can see, um, right now the water is lower than this, but you can basically take this out on the water and things like these two flat areas are still underwater. And once you, uh, let's, let's go ahead and, uh, okay, new map. There should be a, a way you can name this map. Oh, we click where it says untitled map. Let's just call it new Eastman waypoints oh way pounce <laughs> waypoints give it a description if you want to click save new eastman waypoints we got our different uh different waypoints you can double click on them and i think you can change the color and everything in here style and yeah, you should be able to change the color and the icons here in Google My Maps, if you wanted to. And let's say you make some changes on your Google My Maps. And I want to say you can even add, you can add different waypoints, different uh, landmark markers on here. And then you can also export it from there and then import it into your Google Maps. So you can modify it from there. But I don't like doing it that way. I just like doing everything in Google Earth. And then uh, once I make changes in Google Earth, I upload it into my Google Buy Maps. That way it's all on my phone. So as you can see, we have all our waypoints and everything in here. So we're good to go. Let's go ahead and go back. So right here we have new Eastman waypoints, our different little waypoints there. If you wanted to share with somebody, you can actually share your map. I don't know if you'd want to share with anybody, but I like to share. You can share it to Facebook, email. They'll just send them that KMZ file, and then they can open it on their Google My Maps. So anyway, yeah, you just uh, upload it into Google My Maps, and you make it available. That'll make it available to your phone. So on your phone, let's go ahead and open up a. I'm gonna try to get my phone, my phone screen on the live stream here let's see here there let me move this off to the side I don't want you guys seeing that bear with me here I've got to launch my application so I can get access to my phone that way I can show you guys how it looks in the phone or how to access it in the phone, actually. Let's see here. All right, I got my little screen share thing in queue. Okay, now let's go, and there's my phone, 
a little bit slow, but um, so if you go to Google Play Store, come on, right, let me just control it with my phone. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go to the Google Play Store, and if you search for Google My Maps. It's this guy right here, Google My Maps. Go ahead and just install that on your phone. Install that guy on your phone and you can access those maps when you're on the water. So let me open, I've got my little fishing shortcuts here. So once you have it installed, just tap on My Maps, and right away mine brings up the last thing I was uh, accessing. But when you first open it, it's gonna you're gonna have to log into it, or it, it might already be logged into. I'm not sure. It's been a while since I've I logged into this. But anyway, here you can add different things. You click the little plus sign, but we're not gonna be adding anything. Um, because these are these waypoints here should be the ones that we uh, there we go let's just refresh it so obviously here we've refreshed and we see our new Eastman waypoints if you click on it it's gonna open your waypoints those ones we just created are in there and Obviously, these things are underwater right now. Like the parking lot, like I was saying, it's underwater. So if you take this out on the water with you on your phone, you have this map loaded up and you just hit the little GPS icon. Oh, obviously that's going to my house. <laughs> but when you're out on the water, you just hit the little GPS icon, um, the little circle there, and it'll track where you're at. and let's say you don't have a fish finder and you want to fish this parking lot here your GPS will just follow you around this area so you can tell when you're at the edge of this parking lot or when you're over it because the GPS is obviously your phone is pretty accurate and I even tested it today when I was out there um, I would follow I had to keep my phone right next to my my maps on my uh, my Lawrence and it was fairly accurate um, I saw a change in, in in depth and I also saw it on my uh, my Navionics or whatever map it is that comes with it the Genesis Insight maps um, the change in, in water depth coincided with what was being shown on the phone so it's pretty accurate if you guys don't have a fish finder you can get this stuff for free you make these maps for free if, if uh, you put the time in. So yeah, that's it. It's pretty easy. Pretty easy to do. Um, you just gotta find some time. Obviously, look how quick it took us to create this. I, I did it in what, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, something like that. But that's you know that's pretty much it. Um, once again, you're sorry for all the, the technical, who is that? Oh, I see Lewis uh, left a, my only follower. <laughs> it's all good, man. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and close this session down. Um, maybe I'll do another one with a different lake next time, but this one was pretty impromptu because I was gonna start at eight and I didn't end up starting till 8.45, so. <laughs> um, anyway, um, whoever's watching, thanks for watching. Uh, maybe in a, a week or so, I'll, I'll do another one on, on Hensley Lake or something. 
you have any questions, just go ahead and leave them in the comments or uh, send me an email and I'll answer them as best as possible. Or you can shoot me a message on, on Central Valley Kayak Fishing I can, or uh, the Bass Mob page. I can answer your questions or you want me to help you make a map, I can help you make a map. Anyway, all right. We'll see you guys.